So in order to understand creasing, um, we first need to understand subdivision levels and uh, real ones versus dynamic ones. Here I have two cubes, they're both exactly the same. They're just six faces, that's it. And on the first one, I'm going to hit divide. Divide will create a real subdivision level for this object. And on this object, I'll try dynamic subdivision. So in this instance, I'll hit divide. The smooth button or modifier is on. And what this will do is try and when it divides this, it will take each face divided into four, um, quadrupling the, the polygon count, but also attempting to smooth it. So if I hit divide now, it will smooth. And you can see that front face now became four faces. And it also has tried to smooth it with the surrounding faces. Every time we hit divide, it will smooth it more and more and it will increase the polygon count by a factor of four. So that's um, real subdivisions. If I go to our dynamic subdivided object over here, um, which hasn't been dynamically, has, nothing has happened to it yet. Um, rather than hit the divide button here, I'm going to hit dynamic. And when I hit dynamic, we're going to get the same result as we did over here. The difference is this is the slider for how many subdivisions we have, one or two. And this can be turned on or off by just hitting the dynamic button. Whereas on this object over here, we go up and down the subdivision levels like this. You'll notice as well, if I go down the subdivision levels, down two, and on this one, if I turn this off, you'll see that this cube, which originally started off as the same size as this cube, is now significantly smaller. The reason for this is that as we go up the subdivision levels, when we first divided this, it rounded off the shape. And the more we rounded it off, and the more this became the, the bounding box size of the actual final cube. So when you go back down the subdivision levels, it attempts to recreate something closer to what it got at the top subdivision level. So if I go back down to, to one, this cube is closer to that than the original one. You'll see on this one, when I turn, turn dynamic on, the, circ the sphere is significantly smaller, but dynamic subdivision remembers the original shape. This is pretty much, pretty much just a preview of what it's going to look like. We're not actually performing subdivision on this. Um, to demonstrate this even more, if we put this up to say five subdivisions, and on this one, we, are, we have three, so we'll divide once more, once more, and once more. That's five subdivisions, even though it says six, because the first is the very first level. Now on this, I can take a standard brush such as a uh, well, just a standard brush, and I can sculpt on this surface. On this one, I can't do that because I actually don't have enough polygons to actually do this. This is just a preview. So I'm going to undo this, and I'll undo past where we added the initial subdivisions, and so we should get it back to its original size. So this now has no subdivisions, and this one. When I turn dynamic on, I'll reduce this back down to two for when we do toggle it on or off. The next thing we'll do is we'll try to divide this with smooth turned off. And you notice when I hit divide, we now get four polygons, but no smoothing of the actual shape. So I can continue to divide this. And every time I do, we will get four times the amount of polygons on the edge here. You'll notice that at this stage, if I turn smooth back on and I try and divide this, the smoothing really only works on a turn of form. Um, so it tries to smooth that. So it's not going to really do an awful lot of smoothing on a flat plane, but where it meets an angle like this, it's going to try and smooth. So whereas previously, this had one long edge here and one long edge here, and it tried to smooth, it created a perfectly round sphere because that edge hit another edge immediately. Over here now, none of these edges are going to get smoothed or pulled, except for this one, because these two edges are connected to a turn of form. So these are going to get smoothed. So when I hit divide now, you'll see that only the outer edges really get smoothed. So essentially what we've done there is we've added in what we call a support loop. This edge loop here um, is actually preventing the entire object from smoothing really sharply. So in the case of a dynamic subdivision object, when we turn this on, if I were to insert an edge loop in here, effectively mimicking, adding in this loop in here, over here and maybe one at the top mimicking this loop here so now we have these two short edges on the outside of our object when i turn on dynamic now you'll see that this because they all, it only had two long edges these two long edges it will attempt to smooth and it will do a fairly smooth job on them whereas these two edges it's really only smoothing the outside which is why we're getting the same tight effect that we get when we divide this 
over here. So these two edges are the same. So that's the support loop. So where creasing comes in is creasing can actually do a lot of the job of a support loop for you. So for example, if we were to insert uh, an edge loop in here, we would, uh, when we turn on, actually I can turn this off. If I were to slide this edge loop, I'm gonna slide this backwards and forwards and I'll slide this while I have this dynamic preview turned on. So I'll press, I'll press D to turn that on. I'm gonna slide that backwards and forwards and you can see the effect it has of sharpening up whichever side it's actually close to. If I move it over here, this side will be sharp. If I move it over here, this side will be sharp. Um, so we can, using this, we can determine exactly how sharp uh, a given edge is, but we need to actually add those edges. Like So in order to avoid that, I'm going to remove this edge loop by holding down Alt on Insert Edge Loop. So now what we're attempting to do really is to simulate adding in these support edges so our the turn of form here will will have edges that are relatively close to them by do, uh, in doing this all we have to do is if we smooth this once all right sorry in this instance i've creased the entire object to keep all of the edges hard and creased so the first time i go and smooth this it will look at this crease level and say no you haven't reached this threshold yet so i'm going to keep the edges hard while i uh, uh, increase the polygon count by a factor of four or divide them so the next subdivision each one will be divided again, the next, because this number still hasn't hit this number. At the third, it still hasn't hit this number, but now what we have is edges, are polygons, simulated polygons, uh, simulated edges rather, on the end, which are going to be about as sharp as the one we have over here. So over here, now that we, we had divided this without any smoothing, if I now hit smoothing and I turn it on, it's just going to smooth those outer edges. And so now with this uh, crease threshold, as we're about to smooth this once more, it will go above the crease threshold of three. And so now it will actually smooth those edges and we get the same result as we got over here. So how does this help us? What this means is that if we want a smaller bevel on this, we simply have to lower the crease value. And that lower crease value is, is sh shortening the distance of those perceived edges. So as we turn this on, uh, I can I can lower the crease value again and we get a rounder shape because it's it's kept the edges hard for the first subdivision and then for the remain for the next three subdivisions it's tried to smooth it but one subdivision only is the equivalent of is the equivalent of this so those edges are quite hard and so we get a soft shape Hope this helps. I, I know it's a confusing topic, but um, basically the upshot of it is, if you want to change your, your um, how sharp your edges are, it's a mixture of these two values. The higher the numbers are and the closer they are together, the tighter the edge. If you move the crease value down low, you'll get a, a softer edge. And if you bring your smooth value down and your crease value up, it will stay as a harder edge. So you may ask yourself, well, what's the difference between doing this and just doing this? Why not just keep um, dividing, dividing until you get to the subdivision level that you want and then turning on smooth and using this as a way of getting to the shape that you want. Um, the difference with this is that this is um, a, a subdiv mesh, a dividable mesh like this can't actually have its, its topology changed. So for example, I can't mirror and weld this object. Um, it will tell me that I can't do this because I would be changing the point count on this and the, and the point order of this. So th there's limited things you can do with the subdivision model. You can't add insert uh, multi meshes onto them. You can't, uh, I can't delete polygons. I can't add polygons. I can't change polygons. Um, so this is quite limited. Also, if I want to change one side of this after the fact, it's very hard to do. Whereas over here with the creasing turned on, and uh, my su smooth subdivision is set to say three and i set my so uh, my smooth subdivision to four or five as in over here uh, but then i can decide after the fact that i'm going to choose selectively which edges i no longer want to crease so i can have whatever shapes that i'd like from that by just simply choosing the edge uh, so i've uncreased that ed these three edges here this is a huge advantage when you start building um, multiple strange shapes 
and you need certain edges to be creased and others not. So maybe you have a um, and you, for whatever reason you want to crease the stuff at the top or certain edges and others you don't want to. Uh, you can selectively go in here and decide which ones you, you want to crease. You don't have that option the other way. So that's the advantage of creasing. Not all render engines support it, uh, it's important to note. So uh, you do have to check if you're staying within ZBrush, this is fine, creasing works for everything. Uh, and if you're actually happy with your object and you want to convert them into real subdivision levels for sculpting, because as we said, you can't actually sculpt on this, then you simply hit the apply button. Uh, and this one will be converted into real sculpting subdivisions and the creasing is actually on the object. If you hit uncrease all now, it will have no effect on this because you've already applied that creasing as it were. This is now a final effect and can't be modified via creasing in the same way as the previous one.